201 teenagers died of COVID-19 complications in South Africa between March 2020 and August 2021. That's according to the National Institute for Communicable Diseases. The NICD says during the third wave, both testing and confirmed cases increased, peaking from mid-June to mid-August when schools were open. Let's unpack these numbers with Dr. Tendesai Kufa Chakeza, a senior epidemiologist at the NICD. Thanks for your time. We appreciate it. So these numbers are quite concerning when I look at it. The dead figures seem pretty high, right? But there's context. So explain it to us. Uh, thank you for inviting me, Shahan. Um, so as you correctly pointed out, we just started a report that came out yesterday uh, looking at the number of cares, the number of cases picked up, uh, hospitalizations and deaths among children under the age of 19 since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we, know, we noted in our analysis that the um, proportion of children under the age of 19 among all the cases increased significantly compared to what they were in the first and the second weeks. And we are attributing that to partly the Delta virus itself, although we don't have evidence that suggests that is more um, severe in children or not, but we know that it's infectious, so, you know, we expect that also children will, uh, when there are more cases among adults, will get more cases in children. Uh, and then also, um, partly also increased testing, because as you correctly pointed out, that unlike the first and the second waves, our schools were partially open during the third wave. You will know that we closed our schools at the end of June, and schools were out for four weeks, and then they came back on again at the end of July. Uh, and all of that was still in the middle of the third wave. So, and once you have a case around a child, then you expect more testing of the other children, say, in a school setting. Tedesai, I'm struggling to hear you because your line seems to be breaking up on my part. So, I think the numbers are quite important, and there were 201 deaths among individuals aged between 15 and 19, and 108 were children aged one year and below. If you can tell us, in terms of the number of youngsters we've seen die in this country compared to other parts of the world, how does that look? Um, so our numbers are quite comparable to what other countries in the world are reporting. Uh, there have been, if you, so just to give you a bit more context, this is um, uh, a total of just under 600 deaths in children under 19 out of a population of 21 million children of that age. And that's like 0.7% um, of cases and a very small figure compared to the population that we are talking about. So... I believe that there will be a lot more children that died from other things compared to COVID during the same time. Yeah. So as you mentioned in the start where we had that connection issue, you also found infections increased when schools opened. Does that mean that the measures in place in schools are not good enough when it comes to preventing the spread of COVID-19? Um, I can't comment on how the... COVID-19 protocols are implemented within schools. But as you know, the Delta variant is more infectious than the previous variants that we've had. So it, it's more like, it's more transmissible. You need less contact uh, with somebody who's infected. Um, just from transmission studies outside of South Africa, we have not done similar studies of our own here, but we know that the bulk of transmission happens within households. We're not ruling out transmission within schools. But in countries in North America and Europe and Australia that have dealt with school outbreaks and investigated them thoroughly, the bulk of the infections are still coming from the household as opposed to school. And we, we believe that it is likely to be the same case in our setting as well. So I think the school aspect comes in the sense that when you have a child who's attending school and we pick up a case, we then test more children and the more you test, the more children that you pick up. Yeah. All right. So children also make up around 5% of hospital admissions. Talk to us about the effects COVID-19 has had on these children to a point where they have to be admitted to hospital. 
Um, so just to qualify the statement that you've just made, Shehan, we know that um, these are children that were admitted to hospital and they were SARS-CoV positive. We do not know whether COVID was the reason why these children were admitted. Because as you know, whenever a child is admitted to hospital, or whenever anyone is admitted to hospital during this COVID era, we test for COVID to make sure that they, you know, the person doesn't have COVID and they're triaged correctly and um, isolation protocols are, are properly in place. So whether you're going in for a fractured foot or, or surgery or for whatever reason, you are going to get a COVID test. So the information that we don't have at NICD is the indications for which these children were admitted. What we know is that they were admitted to hospital and they had a COVID positive test either prior to admission or, or at admission or during admission that is associated with their admission. That's what we know. So we think that some of those admissions are not for COVID associated reasons. That COVID is coincidental when they're admitted. And obviously some of the children are admitted because they are ill with COVID. So you can't tell whether any child was admitted as a result or a direct result of a COVID-19 because of the cause on their body or the harm on their body. And I asked that question because, what, there are 309 mm -hmm. children from the age of zero to 19 that have died from the virus. Because if there's conclusive evidence showing that, how do we not know whether they ended up in hospital because of the virus? Um, so that's exactly what I'm saying, that we cannot rule out COVID as a cause of death, but it's, it's also possible that they could have died from other reasons that ended them up in hospital. So we know that children with underlying conditions are more likely to get COVID and they're more likely to be admitted or get severe disease as a result of COVID. But when they do die, we may not always know whether it was COVID that caused the death or whatever underlying conditions the child had. Okay, get you. Uh, last question is whether yes, we should be concerned... because we are concerned... saying we cannot rule out COVID. Carry yes? on, sorry. I'm saying we cannot rule out COVID as a cause of death in the children that, that died. So their death was associated with COVID and not necessarily caused by COVID, because that level of information we don't have, which will then require, you know, extensive analysis of the study, um, you know, of the patient, the records of the patient that died um, and testing and all of these things that are not routinely done when somebody dies in hospital. OK, last question is whether or not we should be concerned about these numbers. I know you say it makes up a very small percentage of the uh, population when it comes to that age group. But is there any concern around the 309 deaths? Uh, yes, there is. Um, you know, any child death is one too many. Um, you know, as a parent myself, I would not want to imagine myself uh, in a situation where I'm having to grieve the death of a child. So in that aspect, it is very important. But at the same time, we don't want to alarm parents and, um, you know, worry people or make people panic that COVID is, is killing so many children. I would like to think that there are other things that are killing our children to a much greater extent than COVID has done in this period that we are, we are talking about. You know, even trauma, uh, violence against children, um, other infections, things like that. So um, we do need to be cautious and we make sure that our children are not getting COVID. At the moment, we're not vaccinating children yet. There is movement in that space, so we need to watch it. But as a parent myself, I would encourage other parents to be vaccinated because, as I was saying earlier on, the direction of infection in most countries that have done these transmission studies intensively is usually from an adult to a child. So we need to protect our children. We ourselves getting vaccinated, ensuring that we maintain the COVID-19 protocols in public places, in schools, everywhere where children are likely to get infected. And what warning signs should parents actually look out for when their child is infected with COVID-19? For a point to them to say, we need to take this child to hospital, what do they need to look out for? Um, so the signs and symptoms of COVID are the same um, in, in children and in adults, but in children there are other signs and symptoms 
that are not as common. For example, uh, gastrointestinal symptoms, diarrhea, maybe vomiting, uh, do okay with COVID in children, uh, especially younger children that are not necessarily seen um, to a greater extent in adults. So it's just being mindful that if there's an adult around the child that has had COVID, uh, being also suspicious, a lot of children tend to be uh, asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic, but when a child has uh, a cough that's not resolving, a fever that's not resolving, um, um, and they're just not doing well. So this is the kind of child that you want to take in and make sure they get a test. All right. Thank you so much for your time and your insight. Do appreciate it. That was Dr. Tendesai Kufa Chakeza, public health specialist at the NICD.